Hey, welcome back. Um, today I've got another weekly haul for you, and I want to thank the two subscribers that I got last week. That was great. I'm trying to increase subscribers and not quite sure how to do that, but um, please share this video with your friends if you like it, if you like the content. I'm going to go through one week's of thrifting items. I went to um, one garage sale over my lunch hour at work. I went to a flea market yesterday on Saturday, the Washington County Flea Market. We then stopped at a vintage market called Trove in Stillwater, Minnesota. Always fun to go there. Some cool stuff was found. And then we capped it off with a trip to Goodwill before we went home. So I'm going to get started um, right away with uh, the garage sale items. I stopped at a garage sale in East St. Paul and this gal had everything for a dollar. It had been open about an hour and um, I found this M.A. Hadley plate. It's like an 80s pottery, that's the signature. There was another plate uh, there, a little small happy birthday plate, but I already have one of those that I haven't listed, so I decided not to pick it up. But this is very collectible, especially if you can find the entire sets. And this is a very common one. I don't know what the comp sold comps, I'm guessing around $20 to $30 maybe but we will see what it does. The second item I picked up for a dollar at that sale was this little mud pie pill box. This is like the second pill box that I have sourced in the last few weeks. I got a leather um, fossil one online right now, but this was cute as it had the original box. Again, mud pie is contemporary, it's not vintage, um, but this was a very cute little um, pillbox that has a, oops, I'm going to have to fix that, has a uh, photo holder in it. I'm sure that's only about a $10 item on eBay, but it was worth scooping up, I thought. <clears throat> then I got these salt sellers at the same sale, all of these for a dollar. Um, these are D and EQ Royal Austria or O and EQ. Wait, let me let's see this. Q and EQ or O and EQ. I haven't looked these up yet, but um, they're in perfect condition. They're sort of luster wear. They've got the gold um, leaf on the rim not in the greatest shape the gold leaf it never is but um there's another little hallmark if you can see that o and e g royal austria not sure what that might be i should have looked that up before i started spieling about it so yeah thanks for nothing but i paid a dollar for all these little pastel salt sellers so that i should be flippable for i don't know 20 bucks Perhaps. Um, another thing that I got were these um, hand knit sweaters. And they're children's sweaters. And I just couldn't pass them up for, I know that's crossing into hoarding territory, but these little Norwegian styled hand knit sweaters um, they're probably a kid's size five or six. They've got the um, pewter buttons. And um, again, this is another out of my wheelhouse item that I'm gonna try and see see how it goes. But the, both of the sweaters are exactly alike. Um, I'll probably sell them as a lot on eBay. I know that when we had a sale last year, um, my sister's friend had a lot of her mom's items because her mom had passed away and she had several sweaters she'd purchased in Norway. There's the buttons on this one. And some lady, she had them for $40 each and it was well worth it. And some lady, they fit her perfectly. She scooped them all up. So I know people appreciate that. I think that was all I got at that sale. I'm going to take a little detour now. eBay, um made me take down some items in violation of their policy. And they were these gorgeous, beautiful, handmade folk art rag dolls. 
And if you look at the stitching on these, they are incredible. They've been up for maybe six months to maybe three months. I don't know. But they took them down saying they were racist. So they're made out of black socks. They have been um, faded. But I think that they're, um, it violate their discrimination policy, I guess. Uh, I had them tagged as Black Americana, but they are gorgeous, gorgeous little folk art dolls with, I had quite a bit of interest, people asking questions about them, and then boom, now they're gone. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. Kind of Raggedy Ann and Andy. Here's the little guy. He's got the really cute yarn hair. His overalls are just wonderfully sewn. Look at that. Vintage buttons. Again, shoot me an email if you're interested in this. My mom used to sell a lot of what was called Black Americana back in the 70s and 80s. And um, there were a lot of collectors of it because it's their heritage. And I imagine that someone made this for their kids to play with. So I don't know. These poor, they're going to be living at my home now for a while until I figure out what to do with them. But that's interesting. If you've had anything taken by down by eBay, I know if you have ivory or eel skin, I had a purse taken down, although I've got some other stuff listed as eel skin um, that has not been taken down. So I really just don't get it. And I don't think those dolls are, um, I don't think they're offensive. I don't know why they would have taken them down. But it is what it is, and you can't argue with the mothership, so... Um, then we went and spent the morning at the flea market and it was a gorgeous day. I found quite a few little things and let's get into those. Um, I had a, this cut glass ashtray was $2 at some vendor's booth and it's in perfect condition. I had one of these that I sold for maybe 15 earlier. So I picked this one up for $2, very heavy cut crystal. I can't remember what this is called right there, that little star, but um, pretty cool piece, I thought. Um, next up at the flea market, I got a lot of jewelry. I think I'm going to do that last and talk about these other items first. This little pottery set I got for $5, and on the bottom it had a $17.50 mark as if it came from an antique dealer or an antique mall. And if you know Stillwater, there's probably, I don't know, at least five to ten antique malls there now. So this could have been somebody selling out of some seller's excess inventory. But this is Royal Copenhagen. It's signed and numbered. I bought it right away because it was so unusual. Um, it's kind of a mid-century pottery piece. Again, it's porcelain pottery or, I don't know, white clay. Um, it is... Um, Fajance, Fajance, F-A-J-A-N-C-E or F-A-I-A-N-C-E must be the style and it's by Nils Thorson and it's a mid-century modern set trinket box with a lid and um, the little bud vase that's well maybe four or five inches tall. Um, there was a comp for a larger vase like this that sold for about 300 on eBay. I'll try to insert the listing or maybe it was 250 there's a few others that people don't know what they are so they're kind of all over the map um, I didn't see any exactly like this with both items so I'm hoping that will make this attractive to people that source or collect this kind of mid-century uh, Danish pottery just gorgeous so I was really surprised that um I found this, I really didn't know what it was until I got home, but very happy. That one kind of made the made the sourcing mission successful, I think. I'm gonna go through this jewelry that I bought from one gal there afterwards. I'm gonna skip ahead now to the Goodwill. Um, we stopped there at the very end and I got this um, tomato um, wall hanging. $1.99. I just thought it was cute. I think they're about $15 on eBay. I do have some other ceramic fruit items from Italy. Ooh, I got a mess down here from the last video. Um, that piece there is, um, I can't remember who made it. Uh, 
Entrada, Italy. And then I also have this piece in my kitchen. Sorry, my kitchen's a mess. And I did see an eggplant piece for $8 that matched that, and I'm really regretting that I didn't buy it. But you can't buy everything. Okay, let's get back to the task at hand, the chaos. You just learn to embrace it as you get older. Okay. <clears throat> so the little ceramic tomato wall hanging. Very cute. Might hang that up instead of selling it. Um, oh, I got a she sham. Not a Scirocco. I kept missaying that last time. Um, bookends or book stand. Um, it's expandable. Um, I think you could also use it as a little... Eh, you probably couldn't. But I thought this was cool. It was five bucks. Um, haven't ever purchased one of these before, so we'll see how it goes. Again, from the import store back in the 70s, these were all over the place. Another piece that crosses the hoarding border. I found this little metal art. Sometimes you find yourself in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes in the middle of nowhere you find yourself. I just thought this was really cute. Um, it's got the little bird on it. It's all copper enameled. It's made by um, Lynn Sanchelli. Art metal. Painted stuff. A gift. Something be inspired. But th there's a lot of the sell-throughs on these on eBay, and they're all around $10 to $15. So I just picked it up. I just thought it was cool and unique. Again, it's contemporary. It's not something you could sell on Etsy or in a strict antique mall or brick and mortar. But just I just love copper enamelware, as you'll see. I pick that up a lot. And the last Goodwill item was this here and this is a pretty good deal too this is a rico industries marble art deco revival um bookends the marble is damaged a little um there is one on first dibs right now like this for um let me move that back i think it's like for 750 bucks or something ridiculous like that. Um, there have been some Rico Industries marble pieces sold on eBay, not for a lot, but this is very, very unique and kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. It's super heavy. I really probably need to retire and get a booth in one of the antique malls or something, but um, I really liked it and what a great deal. I think they were $3.99 a piece. I think I picked the sticker off of this side already. But very nice. Mid-century, 1980, well, not mid-century, but 1980s Art Deco Revival style bookends. Rico Industries. Okay. No, oh, I bought this vintage... I don't know if it's from Ecuador or where. Top, it's embroidered. Um, got this at the Goodwill as well. Just kind of your tourist wear. Um, it's got the two pockets in the front with the embroidery. This reminded me of, we used to have a little place in Bayport called Daggy Village where you could buy import stuff like the shisham wood and the brass and this kind of um, decorated or hand decorated embroidered tourist wear. So that's another piece I'm going to try out of my wheelhouse. Here, I think I'm done with Goodwill. Yep, done with Goodwill. So then we went over to um, Trove, a vintage market that has a lot of little booths in it. They have new stuff, they have crafts, they have antiques and vintage. Um, I always find something in there though. It's worth a stop and it's unfortunately it's the it's hard to find. It's right near the flea market, but you have to go on this back road to get there. So I hope that it's located in the Google Maps. They do have um they will be having an outdoor flea market 
in September, um, I think it'll be the third or fourth week in September at the same time that the last Washington County flea market is. So I'm gonna make sure to get to those two flea markets. But it's a tiki mug, there's nothing written on it. Um, I'm guessing it's monkey pod wood or made in the Philippines. Paid a dollar fifteen for it, which is a strange, strange price, but I'm good with it. I thought it was really cool. I've got a tiki bathroom. Tiki decorated bathroom. <clears throat> then from the same vendor at that um marketplace, Trove Marketplace, I bought this tiny engraved brass tray for a dollar twenty-five. I've done really good with some of this decorated brass or cloisonne and brass. So for a buck twenty-five, of course, I'm gonna pick that up. Um, more like a coaster. I shouldn't even put use this one. But very pretty, and uh I think it's just florals on there. And then oh, this is something I got at the flea market too. I picked this up for a dollar. Right as we were leaving, this is that cloisonne or enameled brass. A little bit of damage on it, but for a buck, I can't, you know, it's like crossing the hoarding line again. $14.99 when new, probably at like Diggy, or Pier 1, it says. Um, solid brass made in India. Um, it looks like it survived some other sales. It was $3 at one time, but... It's nice that it's got the little holder too, so. That's that. Okay, I think we can get into the jewelry now. Always my favorite. Um, the first piece I bought was this one for a dollar. I thought it was Lucite, but it feels like glass now, it's cold. So I just thought maybe somebody, you know, the Barbie core, pink, but I'll have to do a little bit more research on it. I don't know what exactly these beads are. So I will be doing some research. I didn't look at this yet either. But it doesn't look like gold to me. Although, let's check it out. Nope, don't see anything on there. But I thought that was really a cute necklace for a dollar. And from that same vendor, I got this other piece. And this is sort of a cobble together, and I can always use a sterling chain, a good sterling chain. I've got a lot of different pendants. This isn't the greatest little pendant here, but for a dollar, I'm gonna pick up a sterling chain all day long. It's 925 Italy. I'll have something else that I can put on there and then maybe put this in a jewelry jar or lot on my garage sale. And then when I first walked into the flea market, I was looking at this um, treasure craft creamer and sugar that I'd never seen before. It was all one unit and I ended up chipping the lid. So the seller wanted $10 for it. So we came to a, a place and I gave him five bucks, but that was, that's how I started the flea market. And I thought, oh, this is going to be horrible luck. But it was recovered when I found this at a um, booth. She had a bunch of jewelry in a bag. Each one was a dollar each. Um, this isn't the greatest. I thought maybe it might be Brighton based on that metal work there, but I'll have to do more research. The chain is definitely not Brighton, but in that same batch, I did find a Brighton um, chain for um, beads. So you can tell there's the Brighton, um, let's see if you can see it, little Brighton signature heart. Um, you would get purchase different beads and, and make your own charm bracelet. Celebrate life, celebrate life. So that was a good find. <clears throat> so she actually had a dollar on each item and then if you bought five, you got one free. So I ended up with 12 pieces from her. Um, let's see, those two were for another one, but she was, must have been a heart. She really liked the rhinestone hearts. This is, um, very cute. I like heart jewelry too, as you can tell. Um, this is 
Albion. I have no idea what that is, but I'll be looking that up. But it seems to be in pretty good shape. Um, there are a few of the little seedy rhinestone, seed rhinestones missing. Nothing glows, so no diamonds there, unfortunately. Nothing glows here either. But I thought that was a cute little necklace. So we'll be looking up Albion. I don't know anything about it. Um, here's another necklace found. Uh, nothing glows here. Just, I think it's stainless steel, maybe. It has something on the back. It says IBE CN. So I'm going to have to look that up on the internet as well. Um, is this a sterling chain? I'm not sure. I think this might be stainless, but I'll take a closer look at that. But let's. Very pretty. Here's one I picked up as one of my free ones. This is an express bracelet. Um, again, I'll probably lot this up with a few pieces, but someone may like that from express. Bling, bling. <clears throat> Here's a sterling heart that I purchased from the same gal. Uh, made in USA. It has an original sticker on it. Doesn't look like anyone wore it. It's got a locket. Uh, marked sterling somewhere on here. Maybe on the cla on this little pendant. And on the um, clasp. And then finally, here's the mystery um, statement piece with rhinestones and enamelware, some big colored amber rhinestones. I don't know, it looks like a seven. It looks like the seven for all mankind logo on it. So I don't know if they make jewelry or um, what, but it's just a very strange, it's a contemporary piece, but I'm not sure of the logo, but it looks like a seven with like the word seven written next to it. Here's a little pair of embedded lucite earrings. These look to be vintage from the 50s. Whoops. A little tree. Tree of life, maybe. I don't know if you can see them very well. I'm not paying attention here to what I'm showing in front of the camera. But I thought those were just adorable. I've got, actually got a necklace that matches this myself, but I don't have pierced ears. And another freebie, I picked up the liquid silver bracelet. This is for a kid, though. Very small. I don't think it would fit on my... Well, almost. I'd have to have help getting it on. But So that from the 70s. I had tons of that in the 70s. Picked up a couple rings from the same seller. Here's a man's... Some kind of a promise ring. It's, uh, I think it's probably titanium. And it says, I promise you, in the center of it. Um, these, I believe, are sterling. That looks like a sapphire inside. When you shine a black light on this, only one shows up as a diamond. Whoops, can you see that? Maybe you can't. There, can you see that? So, very pretty. Cute little pinky ring or something. Very small. I think it's probably a size 5. And then this other ring that is pretty spectacular. It is um, sterling. It's got inlaid abalone, and I'm not sure what this carnival glass stone is inside, but boy, is it pretty. Uh, you just, you can't really see it very well. But yeah, that's a really gorgeous looking ring. Very different. And then finally, Got three more things here. I picked up a cloisonne hair clip. Um, I saw the homeschooling picker, and oh, I can't remember the other guy that she goes picking with. Um, but they picked one up at an estate sale, and the one that they found was apparently worth a lot more money. I picked this up for a dollar. The guy actually wanted 50 cents, and I just gave him a buck. Um, but I'll see what this vintage hair comb 
might bring. Very pretty uh, butterfly though, I really like that. And then I picked up another sterling bracelet for $1 from another seller um, and hooked up with them. The lady was really trying to sell me on the rest of their jewelry and wanted me to wait and stuff. And I was, I had to go, so I didn't stay, but turns out their um, like storage unit buyers or something from Menominee, Wisconsin. So I took a picture of their sign and I will um, watch for them in future flea markets. Okay, anything else? Oh, then I did buy something on eBay just because it, it popped up in my feed and I've sold some of these little snuff or perfume bottles before, but I got this for 99 cents on eBay and and then $6 shipping. And I thought, well, that this is crazy because this is super cool and the ones that are listed, but the guy only had them listed as glassware. He didn't have them listed as reverse painted snuff bottles. So if you Google reverse painting, you can find a video that shows all the stages or you can actually buy these these import wear that show like the outline and then the application of color, but they're painted inside. These are 100 Boys of Four Seasons, little snuff bottles. I just thought they were adorable. And for a dollar, it's like, I think I have a lot of resellers that buy from me. So I can see if you're watching and people don't have the keyword like snuff bottle or reverse painted, um, you would stumble across this stuff, but you can also just screen capture it on eBay and then search for it. And there would have been two or three other listings of this same thing. So I'm not sure what was going on here, but I bought it. You know, this could be a garage sale item for five bucks. I don't know, but maybe I'll put it on eBay. But that was my haul. So thanks for coming along. Thank you to all the new people that are subscribing, my two new viewers. And um, share it with your friends and stop back for next week's haul. Drink water and keep moving.